arts presentation is divided into three sections. We have a see it section in which you'll see how philanthropy works. Believe it, so you can believe in um, how philanthropy can change your life and the people around you. And finally, there's a build it section, which is um, envisioning a, uh, an organization similar to Grow for your own school, so how you can change your own school. So GROW, it stands for Girls Reaching Others Worldwide, and we were, for and tell us if I'm talking too fast or something, okay. Um, we were formed in 2000 by a group of seventh graders, so it was actually brought to the school by um, the students themselves. And we are a grant-making entity that works out of the school itself. So we fundraise the money ourselves, and um, we have applications from a lot of organizations around Cleveland and some from around the world. They come to us every year and in March we have a proposal review process. So we take all those applications, we read through all of them, and we decide where we want the money that we fundraised to go to. And it started out in the middle school with the seventh grade and just recently in the past two years we brought it to the upper school as well. So high schoolers also wanted Grow to come to the upper school so, so we actually started the process over again and so it's, it's just become a part of the upper school too. So then the first part of establishing a grant making entity like GROW is creating a mission which drives our conversation in everything. So in the middle school, this is our mission and when it started out because the girls saw a need for learning on service, that's why they wanted to start GROW in the first place, our mission was more based on service learning. So we would do things, we would raise our money, and in the middle school we have advisor groups. And so we would donate money to those advisor groups, and they could go out and buy things like fleece to make tie blankets to donate to homeless shelters, or buy stuffed animals to give to kids that were in Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital. Those are some examples. But as time went on, we saw that the need in our community outside of our walls was more for education. So we do things, one example is we fund an organization called University Settlement. And they have a back to school fair every year. And we fund for supplies for them to put in their backpacks so that those students have the right supplies to go to school. And this is how our mission reads now. The middle school branch's ultimate goal is to encourage and support educational programming by assisting organizations that address real community needs. GROW strives to develop civic responsibility, especially in the greater Cleveland community, so more people will aid humanity. Okay, and the upper school mission is a little more broad. Um, it reads, the upper school branch of GROW fosters passion for philanthropy in the HB community and promotes economic and social empowerment through grant distribution, microfinance loans, and fundraising. And the piece that we most focus on when, um, is the economic and social empowerment. So whenever we're doing our proposal review process in March every year, we always, we always come back to the mission statement and do the proposals that we receive from organizations match our mission statement. And that's always something that we have to think about. And if, um, so the ones that are more what we deem economic, economically and socially empowering are the ones that we end up funding. So our mission really guides um, the decisions that we make in our process. And also what sets the upper school apart from the middle school is the microfinance loans. And we work with an organization called Kiva. They had a booth here. I don't know if you saw it, but it was in the ex ex exhibit hall. Um, and they work with, um, they give microfinance loans, and we, they have all kinds of people, but we focus on women, and um, so we can economically empower them. And we give loans to these women, and they eventually pay them back, and we also get back a small return in interest, so we, so that process keeps happening, so we keep re, um, get, uh, we donate, not donating, lending that money out again and again, and eventually over time it grows. So in the middle school, we've had a partnership with the Cleveland Foundation, and they've helped us to really establish our process, but also a community partnership with the Crittenden Foundation, and this is their mission. And it has really allowed us to reach the audience that we want to, which is at-risk adolescent girls in the Cleveland area. So what's really special about it is that it's 
girls helping girls. So that's really nice for us to have that personal aspect. And also it's really helpful with fundraising because we have to make all the money ourselves. So a lot of community foundations, they get large sums of money at a time and we don't get that. So having this partnership since 2006, they give us about $5,000 a year, which helps so much because we're able to give out that money without having to do things like pop popcorn and sell um, snacks, which is the way we raise all the rest of our money within our school. When we, we the upper school just started the Grow Foundation t and we just wrote our mission this year, actually we finalized it. And it's hard to write a mission because it can be too broad or it can be too specific and either way it won't help you make a lot of decisions if it's too broad or too specific. So w our key words were economic and social empowerment. So that's what we always look for when we do grant proposals and when we um, read any when we read anything and try to relate it to our own organization. So when we wrote it, we looked at a lot of different missions. So you can see on the back of those sheets that you have um, are organizations that are here at the conference. And those, we have the mission statements written out right there. And you can read how they're, they're all really different. Some are really long, some are short, some are specific, <coughs> some are not specific. And some are like, there's like, there's also a difference between a mission and a vision statement. And the mission is like more specifically what you want to do, whereas a vision is how you imagine the world after you've changed it through your organization. So you can think about that too. You can have two different mission statements, or a mission and a vision, or just a mission. But basically, it's like your guiding force for whatever actions you decide to take with your organization. Um, oh, right. So if you don't know where to start with your mission, a great place to start is with a needs assessment. So what that would mean is that you would have a survey, you would conduct a survey with the group of students that you have and see what they feel is most important to them. So you would research the needs in your community and you'll often find that you didn't know that it was such a big need in your community. Like I didn't know so many people in my suburb were on food stamps. I had no idea and so it was really shocking and eye-opening but that's an another great part of the needs assessment so then you can decide what you want to focus on and you can see what is important to people and then that really helps to be able to create your ideal mission. Sure, that's on the website. Yeah. So we have a page on the Generator School Network website that you guys can look at if you want to. And it has a lot of different handouts that could help you to start this at your school. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just <laughs> So one of them is <laughs> sort of a mock proposal review again like this. And so it would be, it's one kidney and you have to decide there are like, <laughs> what? No, sorry. Okay. Yeah, the, there's, or like who, who, you have to decide who's going to get help with the surgery. And so there are about 10 people and there are different benefits and different detriments Drama. to giving it to each person. So then you have to rank who most deserves it and who least deserves it. And so that shows you the challenges that we face during the actual proposal review. So fundraising is <coughs> more doing things or having benefits or different events that you're going to raise the money yourself and that's um, like I said we've have we have snack cards called we where we sell snacks we have a holiday fundraiser so every time around the holidays in the winter and then fund development is more getting it's sort of like our community partner that we have and we receive the money from them 
annually for the most part, and then it's also investing and then getting interest on the money that you have saved and then deciding how much you want to give each year. Do you want to save? Do you want to spend a lot more this year than you did last year? So then that links into community outreach, which is, which is really important because this makes our fundraising and giving out our money more concrete because we do a lot of site visits. So the sixth graders are involved as a class in the different places that Grow donates to. So it really helps them to see where their money's going. And then we have a lot of speakers come back to HB and they not only report back to us about what they did with our money if we did fund them before, but they also talk to us about what their organization does to kind of advocate for their organization for us to think about donating to them in the future. Is there anything you want to add? Well, I have an, an example of that. Um, we funded an organization called the Rape Crisis Center, and we funded art supplies for them to help the girls in the program sort of work out their anger through the art. And the woman came back and talked more about the program, but mostly about what they did with our money. And they showed us they had the actual art projects that the girls did, and we got to hold them and touch them. And it was really, really powerful to see that that's what we had paid for. And that was only $1,000, I believe. So you don't have to have a lot of money to make a big difference. We only had $1,000, but art supplies was so important to that one organization for that program. That was what the program was all about, and we were able to fund such an important part of it with a smaller amount of money. And so that's what philanthropy is more about. It's not just about giving away money. We say it's about giving away your time, because you have to take the time to decide who to give your money to and to raise the money and then your treasure. So your if your time is important to you or what's important to you and then your talents. So using your own talents and what peop different people in the group are good at to raise money and then give it out. So it's not just about donating money. Should I say that? And then we wanted to end with the meaning of uh, the word philanthropy, like the Greek origins of it. Uh, phil means love, and then anthropy means of man. So the word philanthropy actually means love of man, which we thought encapsulates like the whole, the point of our whole foundation, love of man. Thank you. <laughs> That's it.